Nvidia versus AMD, who really wears the crown in the AI chip market? And more importantly, why should investors care? The main reason is because every chat GPT response, every single self-driving beta, every AI generated whatever needs mountains of specialized chips. If you want to see which company might write that data center gold rush, you've come to the right place. So let's get started. First, let's understand the state of the AI market. Demand for AI accelerators or chips that kind of are super efficient for this amazing math heavy lifting data process has gone vertical. NVIDIA GPUs still anchor roughly four-fifths of AI training and still own a massive market share in inference. But hyperscalers are begging for second sources to ease shortages and pricing pressure. Enter AMD, waving new AI chip and open source flag. Think of this as the Coke versus Pepsi moment for AI compute. All right, so let's start with the champ, NVIDIA, which just wrapped its fiscal year 2025 a few months ago with a jaw-dropping $130 billion in revenue, up 114% year over year. Recently, with its most recent earnings, it came in at a stunning $39 billion in data center, most of that coming from GPUs. How? First Mover Advantage plus its CUDA, which is its proprietary software toolkit that most developers already know. And switching out of CUDA is a headache, so it keeps developers into the ecosystem. The hardware also keeps innovating. The company just is the company is ramping up its Blackwell architecture, which is dirty and even more times better than its overall prior architecture the hopper. And NVIDIA isn't resting. Next generation, the Vera Rupin chips arrive in 2026, and we already know 2027 and 2028 and beyond. In short, the moat is wide, deep, and periodically refilled with faster AI chips. Now let's look at AMD, the challenger. AMD closed 2024 at $25.8 billion in sales, with its data center division nearly doubling to $12.6 billion. You can definitely see the difference inside here. Crucially, more than 5 billion of that came from its instinct AI GPUs. The big splash was MI300X, which was adopted by Microsoft and Meta and OpenAI to run various workloads. That win proved that AMD's hardware can hang with some of the big dogs that Nvidia provides. They also do have their own software solution, the Rockham Stack, which is improving and innovating over time. Fast forward to last week, June 2025, AMD rolled out the MI350 series, bolstering some amazing, amazing performance gains and claiming up to 40% more tokens per dollars than NVIDIA B200. Even hotter, CEO Lisa Su brought Sam Altman on stage to confirm OpenAI is an early design partner for next year's MI400 platform. Translation, AMD is hustling to close the gap through code design and aggressive pricing. Now let's look at the near-term outlook, the next 12 months. Supply finally is loosening, meaning NVIDIA can ship boatloads of Blackwell accelerators, so expect it to keep north of 80% of share through 2025. I'm personally bullish with a little concern. The man has this blink and you'll miss it crazy. But if a few hyperscalers overbuild, watch those margins compress. AMD though, meanwhile, will be judged quarter to quarter of how fast it ramps its MI350 volume. If Azure or Meta scale deployments beyond pilot rigs, AMD's data center revenue could pop again. But until Rockham feels as frictionless as CUDA, adoption risk stays real. My gut, short term still leans Nvidia, with AMD stealing smaller but meaningful pockets. Now let's look at the long game scenario, three to five years. Look further out and the chessboards gets messy. NVIDIA's roadmap cadence, Blackwell Now, Rubin 2026, Rubin Ultra 2027, aims to deepen its lead before rivals can stabilize. Yet hyperscalers don't like single supplier dependency. They'll nurture AMD, their own ASICs, even newcomers, just to keep pricing honest. If AMD executes on its MI400 with its Helio Rack scale, it could become the affordable second source. Baked into procurement strategies, a mere 10% share of a market that analysts peg above $500 billion by 2028 would be a needle moving for AMD. Conversely, if CUDA lock-in proves unbreakable or AMD stumbles on software, NVIDIA could entrench a monopolistic margins approach, 
though regulators might then start sniffing around. Now, I do want to talk about some key risk and wild cards. The first is export controls. Washington has already capped high-end GPU exports to China. More restrictions ding both AMD and NVIDIA. Custom chips, Google's TPUs, Amazon Tranium, and maybe OpenAI's in-house ASIC could nibble at total addressable market. Power draw. These companies and these chips are looking for a lot and a lot of power, which is right now a constraint for future data center builds. And execution risk. Remember Intel's GPU misstep, a single tape out hiccup can delay an entire product cycle. As an analyst, I'm cautiously optimistic, but I keep excitement for this ride, except it is going to be massively, massively volatile. So my final take. Who's king? Today, it's still NVIDIA by a few country miles. Revenue scale, software mode, and a conveyor belt of GPUs that customers already know how to deploy. But AMD is no paper tiger. It's recruiting A-list partners, undercutting on price per token, and iterating fast. My personal thoughts, NVIDIA remains the heavyweight champion, but AMD is building the stamina for a late round comeback. Nothing too crazy, maybe a few market share here and there. For investors, though, owning both might be the belt and suspender approach to this AI compute boom, provided you can match the overall volatile swings that this market is going to hit us with. So if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. Also, make sure to go to fool.com slash invest to receive the top 10 best stocks to buy now.